welcome to the new uh, covers. I see a few faces. So thank you for joining. And uh, here we go. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's start by saying, well, what is uh, why we're doing this? This was actually this this uh, this whole uh, this part of uh, the workshop is um, is based on major needs. The past three years and a half, we've got a lot of people who wanted to do collective marking. But we know your centers, we know your realities. We're all over the province, so it's very very difficult to get everybody in a room, which we will do once the need we get there. But we decided to give the information of it, to make the information available to everybody, teachers, CPs, even uh, directions, where they wanted to have an overview or where to get the information, or what's available out there, and how to get the information, in concerning of programs, math programs, and the DEDs. So. The intention mainly is to have common understanding and have the develop the common means to interpret students' work so it could be fair in terms of when we're coming to correct. So we give a fair a fair grade to the students so we make sure that the student is evaluated fairly. So part one, we're going to look at review programs and DED, and we're going to look at examination and breakdown of evaluation rubrics. So notice over here, um, we have the program of studies of mathematics and the mathematic uh, DED. So what do they look like? Uh, obviously, if you take a look on the MEC site, and I will put this, um, this uh, website, well, sorry, I'm going to just put it in the chat. For you, if you ever want to refer to the, the programs and the DEDs, they're available to you. On this side, notice over here the way it's uh, the way it's separated. You have the uh, CCBE program and you have the DBE program. The CCBE program, notice that there's no DEDs. The DEDs of the CCBE is actually got mandated to BIM by all the school boards. So to get the DEDs for the CCBE, you have to go on the BIM site. Uh, in terms of the DBE, which is the cycle two, sec three, four, five. Uh, they're actually uh, necessarily prescribed. So that being said, now if we take a look at the DEDs, I should have it here. So this is what one of the DED would, I have it on the wrong section, but let me show you. You will have all the collection and the DED, all it means is definition of the evaluation domain. So these are very precious documents where we get all the information that deals with evaluation and every Every um, every module has its own uh, evaluation booklets. So we'll see, we're gonna go through it and we're gonna extract the information that we need for our teachers. So let's take a look over here. So for just, for an overview, this is what the mathematic program looks like. We have a CCBE component and a DBE component. The CCBE component is composed, there's a literacy, there's a literacy module, there's a set of modules for literacy, and they called it literacy, I don't know why they called it literacy in the ministerial documents. They should both be like a combination of numeracy and literacy, I assume, but I guess it's a common term that you use. We have the pre-sec, uh, mathematic courses, secondary one, secondary two, and obviously in sec one and sec two, there's multiple modules, of course. Here you have just the grouping of the modules, right? And the minute you hit the DPE, you have the sec three, which has three modules. And of course, the sec four and the sec five, they have three pathways. They have the CST, which is the base pathway. And you have the TS, which is the technical science. And you have SN, which is science nature, which is natural science, if you want. Uh, and that is the, the the more scientifically inclined. So the difference between TS and SN is actually, uh, there's none, there's none, uh, there's no uh, difference in terms of when you get to uh, uh, CJEP, uh, either course, uh, either either pathway is, is evaluated to be as valuable. Um, in the adult, uh, in the, uh, in the adult, sector when we're talking about the school boards there's i think if i'm not mistaken only one school board that teaches ts everybody else have a tendency to do cst and sn and not everybody's teaching literacy or pre-sec some are they just starting from sec one some starting all the way to to literacy and again that is dependent on uh, on the school board and on the center and on the demand from the students okay 
Now, I took uh, Math 3051 as just an example to go through all these documentation and uh, to, 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 to just see what these documentation provide us. So when looking at competency, we have three competencies in, in math. Uh, we have competency one, competency two, and competency three. And notice that competency three by, if you take a look at the documentation, is not evaluated on its own. It's embedded in competency one and competency two. And when we're looking in these documents, you have key features and you have manifestations. And we're gonna see what's the difference between key features and manifestation. Key features is the big, headings of what is in, in, in um, what is included in competency one. So for example, when we're talking about competency one, use this strategy to solve situation problems. We're looking at the defining of a problem, searching of a solution, choosing a solution, implementing the solution, validating the solution. When we're looking at uses mathematical reasoning here, we're looking at the quality of the detail of the information. So first is you're giving, you're setting up your framework, and now we're looking at the quality of the detail. So how are you thinking about it? How you're going about it? So in this case is explore the situation problem, make conjunctures, uh, construct and use network and mathematical cognitive resources, draw conclusions. So this is really like, if you wanna look at it, is the meat and meat of the math. So we want to see in we want to access the the the, the student's mind, and of course uh, competency three is the the language. Can are they competent in using the mathematical language? So these are the three competencies that we uh, evaluate in any uh, math exam. Now notice over here, this is not provided to you. I put it together uh, for you for you to use. What it is is you have the competencies. You have, uh, this is what we talked about when we talk about manifestations of competencies. Uh, these were, uh, this is a, a more detailed list of what encompasses in the key features. Like we saw in competency one, we have defines a problem, but here in the manifestation is, this is exactly what we look for for any of the situations when we're evaluating. Like, is the student capable of reformulating the situation problem? Uh, the situational problem in their word uh, in their words uh, are they able to identify the task to be carried so notice that we're looking into a more detail of what we how we evaluate every competency and notice it's uh, pretty detailed now when we're looking at any math course the program and the ded will provide us a lot of information like for example uh, when we're looking at um, of course in this case we're looking at math 3051 uh, math stands for the course. In this case, is math course. MTH is in uh, stands for math. You have the course where you have the first number over here is the level, and the fifty one is which pathway. So in this case, is a basic pathway, so a CST. And notice in sec three, there's no different pathway. There's just one pathway, which is the same for everybody. And notice the two after that is the number of credits. Number of credits by governmental um, uh, guidelines, every credit is technically supposed to be taught with the 25 hours. So two credits, supposedly 50 hours, but we all know this is not, so, that's not what happens in classrooms. So we think 50 hours is a starting point, let's say, <laughs> and some might even go to a lot more than that. But again, uh, and depends also on the setup of every classroom. Is it a classroom that's uh, individualized? Is it uh, um, pre like uh, in-class presentation? Is it uh, online? Become a dial, like we say, come a dial. Is it virtual? This all varies depending on how we transfer the information or how we teach. And of course, when we're looking here in the program gives us the big families that we have to attach uh, our teaching. So when we're talking about mathematical knowledge, we're, lock, we're looking for the 50, uh, 3051, we're looking at three main ideas, inequalities, relations, and we're, we're gonna see how relation is very, very wide, and systems, when we're looking about how you make relation into a formal setup, which is a system, and you'll see how this, once you break it apart, like map it, how wide it can be. Now, another thing that might be useful is just for anyone who wants to oversee uh, how's the distribution? How's the distribution of uh, the classes, uh, the hours, uh, the, the the recommended hours, 
by the ministry notice over here, they give you an overview. But I have here, uh, I have a document here, hold on. In the program, notice that you will get this kind of information. You have a description of all these pathways and uh, their differences. And notice over here, if you keep going, they're describing, they're giving you a list of all these courses, the amount of hours and the amount of credit uh, located for every course, all the way to SEC 5. Sorry, I don't want to get you dizzy. Now, this is the interesting part. I did this exercise especially for you guys today. Yes, <laughs> I wanted to say, I always, when I go to, uh, I, I give a workshop, I always say, you know, refer to the program, refer to the ED. We have a tendency, our teachers, or me as a teacher, I used to always go to the ED like, Tell me what I need to teach because this is going to be covered in the exams, which is true because the majority of our learning situation complex facts are pulled from the DED because that's really what we're evaluating it at that point in time. You know, let's say in this case is 3051. But notice when you go to the program, how much more detail there is and how much more content there is. So for example, I'm not gonna go through every single thing. Obviously you notice there's a lot of information. So if we take a look at inequality, for example, obviously the program at the DD gonna have to evaluate inequality. But notice over here, when we're looking at the DED only, they're specifically saying, we need to solve first degree equation and inequality in what, for one variable. So if you're only teaching that part and you're only aiming that part, notice how much stuff you kind of uh, took away from the student. Okay. So here, when we're looking at it, the relation studied, when we're talking about relation between A and B, which one's less, bigger, like giving them that number sense, solving first degree inequalities, of course, but when we're looking here, a bit, a, a wider, a bigger range of concept that we kind of need to teach. Obviously here, we should always aim the program, but we know our students, some, some student needs to be kind of, let's say, we could trim a bit the fat and focus on more the DEDs because we know they'll need more time to acquire certain knowledge versus others. They should be exposed to everything because you know very well, if they're not evaluated today on this, they will need it for tomorrow's class. So they'll leave your class less equipped than they should. So that being said, it is, I always encourage strongly for everybody to have a chance to take a look at the program, to do this exercise, to cross check it, to see what is the must versus the extra. But everyone, like if you have a strong student that you know who, who wants to go far, you should give the extra, you know? That's my opinion, but, and that's how it should be. But again, we'll see what time. I mean, it's, it's, it's all circumstantial. It's not a, it's not a judgment. I, I'm, I'm a teacher too. I, I was a teacher too. And I knew when I had to kind of adjust to the need of my student in front of me too. Now, in terms of weighing, this is interesting. Competency one um, is 30%. Competency two is 50% and explicit knowledge is 20%. So again, just to differentiate, explicit knowledge is we're talking about objective base, which means I ask a question, I get an answer. Uh, there's not much thinking, just an application kind of um, a kind of uh, question. When we're looking, competency one is like almost like setting up the situation, seeing if I'm able to extract to make sense of it. But notice the biggest part, the juiciest part, is actually competency two, which is the reasoning, accessing the strategies, accessing to the student's mind the detail, the quality of the detail of how they reason to to actually solve. But my biggest, biggest, uh, how can I say, um, highlight in this document was to um, this part, the weighing of the evaluation criteria appears in the assessment tool providing in the marking guide. So obviously all of this, you have access to it in the marking guide and the program. But this part, adult learners must be made aware of the evaluation criteria used to evaluate them and the corresponding weighing to each criteria. So that means the students should be aware of the uh, correction rubrics. They should be aware of the way, they should be aware of how we're gonna evaluate them from day one. So in the program, you have access to all the rubrics. The rubrics are actually public documents that you're allowed to print and give them, or actually just, if you want take pictures and send them to them virtually, they need to be aware and what they mean. 
Part two, we're going to be able to work with the rubrics, or we're going to transfer the rubric into more like a student language that they can understand it. But at least they should be aware from day one for all their work to be able to go back and check themselves to see, okay, did I include enough of this? Did I include enough of this? So they can self correct. So there's no surprises when they get to the pretest or to the exam. Oh, I didn't know why did I get this mark, right? Now, again, now when we're looking at the evaluation criteria, not all the evaluation criteria for this course are used in the examination. And that they're referring specifically to C3, because C3, when we're talking about communication and math exams, it's embedded in the other two. So we're not only evaluating can they communicate in math, like do they know these terms? They should be able to use it when they come to express themselves, express their thought. Are they coherent with that explanation? And that's where professional judgment come in knowing the students and you're the teachers, right? So um, this is the part that I find interesting. The adult learner must receive feedback on all of them during the learning process. So if they're aware of the criteria, that the, the competencies that they're being evaluated on, then they need to have feedback so they could adjust their ways, their strategies to, to, to be more, uh, to, to, uh, to, to better succeed in mathematics, okay? So the evaluation criteria here used in the examination are present. Obviously here, notice C1 and C2 we're very, uh, very familiar with, and C3 in this case, uh, like we mentioned, it's, it's embedded in the other two. Um, so notice over here uh, in uh, competency one, we only have uh, two components and competency two, you have the other, uh, the, uh, there's three components. Uh, where you'll notice, you'll notice uh, in all of them, actually, there's an element of language, mathematic language. And this is here, you notice uh, that there's the, the title of the competency and, and the more detail going into it. We're not going to practice this. Now, where it's interesting, where it's interesting is if you take a look at the, uh, the program and at the, uh, the DED, you could, you're able to extract all the information that you need. So notice over here, the broad area of learning, there's six broad areas of learning for all the math. So when we look at mathematics as a whole, there's the, there's six, but the 3051 specifically aims health and well-being and environmental awareness and consumers, right? And the family of situation, notice all their learning situation, all uh, ream um, around relationship between quantities. Everything is about how do I make sense about relationship between quantities. So it's an application of it. Um, notice also here that we have process and strategies. Like if you're not sure like how I could like bring in something or how to, there is a whole prescribed, there's a, like there's, there's a recommended strategies that you could actually bring in into your classroom to, to, to actually implement how to work representation, for example, planning, activation, and reflection, which is actually the heart and process in this case of teaching math in that specific uh, subject, which is algebra. Now, when we get to the, the part of uh, the evaluation, okay, specifically, uh, um, we're looking at how many parts does it have? How long can it be? What's the content? All of that part. All of this information comes from the DED. Uh, so obviously here, um, the examination, all math exams have the same format and in in, in such. We're talking about the DBE. The, the CCB is another ball game and we will discuss it in a bit, but we're looking here at the DBE SEC 3, SEC 4, and SEC 5, all pathways. They all have two parts. There's an explicit part, which is short answer, um, an application uh, of some sort, but short and sweet. And you have the, the longer version, which is the, um, the, 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 the complex task, okay? The exams usually last um, 180 minutes, which is three hours exams. And of course, we're evaluating in the section competency one and two and three, obviously. Um, oops, sorry. Let me just go back here. That's it. Uh, now, the format, the ministerial format, if you take a look at your SEC 4, this is usually how BIM makes their exams based on the MEC, uh, the MEC 
format. Usually they have, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they're trying to aim through uh, five to maximum 10. I don't think there's even 10. Sometimes there are, if they're smaller question, five to 10 explicit questions. And in learning situation, they're trying to have three complex tasks, two to three complex tasks. And it's the subtask that they dictates how big or how small if they're three or two complex tasks. But the majority of them, you'll see there's three, most of them. Okay. Now, when we're looking at uh, the authorized material, of course, in this case, uh, calculators, and as long as it's not the programmable calculators, well, you're all familiar with what to do with that. Uh, in term of, uh, in term of uh, memory aids, it's a one side memory aid, it's not a two side. And here, the, actually in the DED, there's specification. Uh, you could have a memory aid consisting of no more than one, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper information on one side only. It could be handwritten or type, it's up to you. It's up to the students and their, 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 like, uh, their best way of learning if you want. Um, minimum of 12 point font, single spaced. So like, mini, well, Listen, in this case, uh, memory aid, as long as it's one side checked by a teacher, it should be okay. And memory aid should be built throughout the learning. So the student know, and this should be used during the learning. It's not something you do at the end. Well, it's never been used and you get to the exam, you don't even know how to use your memory aid. So it's something that should be built from day one and the students use it through, during the learning, through the, 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 the process. Um, the formula sheet, all the formula sheets usually of exams are provided in the DED uh, and, and they're allowed to be given to the students, okay? So, uh, and I recommend this strongly because if they're allowed to see what's the formula sheet look like from day one, I know we all come from different schools and different uh, saying AX plus B, it could be different for somebody who, who, who has MX plus B, you know, M and A, they may not even refer to it as it's the same variable. Um, so getting used to the format of the of the formula sheet might be a good thing to have from day one. And anyway, all of those formula sheets, it's, you know, it's it's public, it's in the DD, so you could access it and give it to your student. If there's any question, you guys could interrupt me. Otherwise, I'm going to just keep on going. <laughs> So I don't know if I wanted to ask, is there any questions so far? Everybody's okay with this? You had your hand up, Leanne? I have a question just about um, the gives an answer that is perfectly consistent with the procedure. Mm -hmm. I don't know if uh, if you're going to get to that because you only showed like part of the, the rubric. Which one? You're talking about, uh, hold on. Uh, this is part of like 2.3 at the end, usually of the rubric. Uh, we're going back to. I don't think I've seen it yet. This one, the proper yeah. organization of the steps and other appropriate procedures. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, okay. but I, like I don't see it here. But usually on the on the grading, there's always a part that says gives an answer that is perfectly consistent with the procedure. Yes, and I find that that part of the rubric is extremely vague, and I'm not too sure what that refers to. Yeah. Uh, this specific comment, thank you for asking it, is probably going to talk a little more on this second workshop, but I'll give you a short answer. If, if let's say the students end up doing solving a problem consistently with his, his, his procedure, and the answer wrong or right is consistent with the way the units, the transfer, everything, even though the numerical value is wrong, but the way he's portraying the answer is correct, that part is correct. And I don't know if it makes sense to you. Like if let's say, for example, I'm measuring, right? And there was a bit of a conversion along the way. And let's say I'm, I'm looking at, I don't know, two centimeter, uh, started by inch and I end up by two centimeter, but the answer is like really five centimeters. And somehow the students found 2.5 centimeters, but it's consistent with his logic. He will get a full mark on that because he was able to still communicate an answer. The value of the answer has already been chopped elsewhere because he didn't do obviously the right procedure. So you cannot take off mark twice for the same mistake type of thing. 
Because if we're looking at a correct answer, the value of the correct answer, if you look at the, the, the rubric in terms of value, it's only 5% out of 100. So he will not get five on five in terms of the that specific thing, but he probably will get a four on five. But again, when we're gonna be working with a with a concrete example, that is specifically intentionally put in one of the examples that we will be working on on the third um, in the third part, and we will have these conversation because it's a very very good point. It's not very clear on how to tackle this because there's two components to that. There is a student that has a logic and goes through his logic and give you an answer that's right based on his logic. But it's not necessarily the right, I'm not, I don't like to use the right logic, but that he made a mistake through his reasoning, let's say, because he's already been chopped off mark on his reasoning. But the answer that he got is based on the procedure he did. And that is, you know, it's right based on his procedure, but it's wrong based on the wrong reasoning. So you're only chopping him marks off on the reasoning part, but not necessarily on the answer part. He will not get a five on five, but he'll get probably a four because he has the right unit, he did the right information, but the answer was wrong. So you'll chop off a mark because it's not a perfect answer, but it's the right answer for the right procedure. The, the, his procedure, not the appropriate procedure. Make sense? Uh, yeah. Yeah. In a weird way, I know it makes sense because we're talking about hypothetically, but once we're going to have an example, we will have that conversation again. We'll bring back this conversation and it'll be easier to 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 kind of uh, see this uh, this this criteria. I know this criteria is always an issue for a lot of people because there's not how can I say it's not clear enough in the term of explanation. But this mm -hmm. is how all the workshops I went to, they brought it up multiple times. But we'll 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 work with that one specifically when we get to the application part. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you for for the question. Gives me a break. <laughs> so let's go back uh, to this. All right. So in term of uh, information gathering tool, we're good. So again, here the authorized material. Um, I had a question in the in in one of my workshop about uh, how do we do adaptation for special needs students and stuff. This is something that I will be bringing somebody from SEC specifically, complementary service, to actually go further on that topic specifically on adaptation uh, for examinations. But um, um, and and they have more documentation on what uh, what's coming up. So I'm not going to go into those uh, section like how we handle like specific adaptation because uh, that is somebody who I'm going to bring in somebody who who knows more of that on the evaluation and how we accommodate students, you know, other than the third time, the computer, the readers and all that stuff. And how do we do that? So again, if we take a look over here, um, there's a, a, a component that I would like to bring your attention to. There is in the assessment tool, there's an explicit part that says here, um, this judgment must be based on a minimum of two completed tasks. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh, an adult learner who completes only one of the three tasks in the examination must be giving a failing grade. I would like to bring this your attention on this. I've been in a workshop where teachers, they just decided to tell their students, just do two out of three, you'll get all the marks. But if you go back and take a look on the rubrics, uh, specifically certain words in the rubrics, and I will bring it to your attention when we get to the rubric section in the second part, is some, uh, some criteria says every task and some criteria says all tasks. So all tasks mean the three tasks. That means you'll never get a full mark. So if you're having a student who decided to do two tasks out of three, you're already starting off the student at mid scale, at the midway. And whatever mistake they get, they, the, the, chances, the, the chances of them failing, it's much, much higher. So please recommend to your students to do as much as possible on all tasks. So at least they get a higher chances of actually succeeding. Okay, and the other things for every competency, it should be practiced in class. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be just in a pretest 
So there should be simulation and progressively getting complicated. Like if you want to look at it from day one to day X, right? So that being said, of course, the passing mark is 60% uh, about retakes. It's a local, um, it's a local school um, decision, the frequency. The students is allowed to retake as many times as they want, but it's a local decision, is a, is a school decision to decide when can they do a retake and how often they need to, they can do a retake so this is a local and it's uh it's actually written clearly in the uh sanction guide now now you may look at this and say whoa what is this this is inside the program there is a section inside the program that it says by the end of this course the adult learner will be able to and they have very specific detail on what your students should be able to when they complete 3051. All right. And notice over here, it's directly related to the competency. Identify, determine, choose, determine, use. Notice that these verbs are very specific. And if we take a look at the competency being C1 or C2, it's directly related to what they're able to do over here. So if I was a math teacher just starting off, I will start off with something like this and work backward. The program is a complete vision of what they're able to do at that level, but I'll cross match it with the DED so I'll know to which student I'll accommodate or I'll adjust the learning to the student. If I have a student who's extremely weak, I may just cut off the extra knowledge on some of them so I could get them to succeed, but everyone should be able to at least have an overview of this okay now we get to the evaluation portion this is the interesting part we will go into detail once we do the simulation of actually collectively marking this but notice that in any mathematic exam you have the theory and the explicit part in the same document it's one exam it's a three-hour exam and has both parts in it uh, the, expli uh, the explicit uh, knowledge is just a grade. It's on 20, straightforward. And notice that the recording sheet for the adults, you have a section for it in the bottom and it's written explicit evaluation of mathematics. So that grade goes straight there. And now you have the complex tasks with all the rubrics, the C1, C2, C3, all in there. And there, these grades, uh, of course, they go by competency. So you're evaluating you have to think about this as like the, the complex tasks are three chances to demonstrate that you actually understand each of these competencies. So when I'm looking at competency one, like for example, define a problem. I am looking at all these three situation and seeing does the student demonstrate is able to show me that he's able to identify the problem with whatever learning situation I give them. Are they able? So if they're, yeah, absolutely. So that's a five. So we're actually evaluating over the three situation to see there's a consistency of a competency, of a success of a competency. So instead of uh, instead of correcting per, competent, uh, per co complex task, we have to look at these complex tasks all built to show us if the student is able to demonstrate it's his or hers or their competency in actually being able to attain of reading a problem, able to define it, reward it in his uh, his or her words, and being able to to give us a reasoning that makes sense is able to 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 show you a way to go about actually solving it. Okay, so this is this is the idea between uh, when we're coming to evaluation and correction. Now, if we go back and we synthesize, obviously, when we're looking about uh, evaluation of criteria competency one, we have two uh, sub competencies for competency one, and we have three for competencies two. So if we have to summarize it for the, sorry, it's not math 4061, but it's uh, 3051 in this case, and it's not energy challenge, sorry, it's a typo for me. Um, prior to the exam, the student must be able to solve a learning situation other than the pretest. The student must be able to have manipulated and solve complex tasks prior to the evaluation and the pretest. The adult must be aware of the evaluation criteria and rubrics that they'll be evaluated with from the beginning of the course. Formula and memory aid sheet must be used throughout the learning process. So if we take a look at it, you have a 20% explicit knowledge. 
80 percent uh problem situational problem all the competencies together is 100 percent it's a three-hour exam authorized material list of format memory eight additional sheet of paper ordinary or scientific calculator but making sure that it's um not a memory uh holding calculators and note uh the exam again the theory and the explicit must be administered once at once it's a one-shot deal <laughs> a three-hour shot deal it's a 60 percent examination uh, passing rate and retakes are permitted it's a local decision it's a center decision on the frequency and of course there should be uh it's it should uh, the same version should be administered uh, consistency like it should be change okay alternation between the version we're preparing for a program we're not preparing for a version and uh that's where i i stop uh, the share i will be providing you uh with all the information that you need about uh, every uh every module like we have like we're gonna put like a little uh uh like a summary per 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 module uh now uh the other thing i wanted to just bring to your attention is um the ccbe the ccbe the program is also prescribed by the ministry and you have access to it on the website that i have shown you where it comes the deds the deds are like i mentioned is uh, the school boards had the uh, well, it was mandated to BIM. If you notice the DEDs in BIM, they're a lot more flexible, a lot more open than the uh, F, uh, the, 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 the cycle two map. So um, BIM has exams. I know some of you uh, like to create their own local exams. As long, again, please, any local exam that is not ministerially mandated can be created as long as it respects the DEDs and follows the program, um, you should be more than okay to use it and administer it. Uh, if, uh, let's say, for example, you want to base your, your local exam on a BIM exam, you can do that as long as you remove the, the, the logo of BIM and you write it local exam, inspired by or whatever it is. But uh, that's mainly the overview on how we use the DD and the uh, programs. Now, next, next part two is going to be taking these rubrics and transfer them in a language where the student is more student friendly. Uh, um, that's it. And creating checklists and all of that to help the students be aware of how they're going to be evaluated and how what their a complete answer should look like what component should be in a complete answer hopefully and uh then part three we're going to get together and actually get real students work and and collectively market across the province and for that it's going to be a more uh, close sessions for those but when we'll get there you'll get all the information you need that being said any questions anything i could help you with anything you would like me to prepare to specifically specifically prepare for you for uh next next uh next uh next time um, i hope I'm... i just wanted to say thank, thanks so much michelin um i just had a thought i i don't think this is part of uh of the three sessions but i think it could be super useful for a couple like for some teachers to sit down and with a math problem and give an example of what would be a five, five marks on this criteria question. What would be four? What would be three? What would be two? Because I think sometimes the criteria are like pretty abstract and it's hard to like concretely know like what would a two actually look like? What would a five actually look like? And I think that's where there's like so much discrepancy in how different teachers grade, right? But uh, yeah, that was just a thought I had, but I'm looking forward to 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 figuring this out and putting it in student friendly um, uh, wording and, and grading. So thanks. No, no, Leanne, thank you so much for this idea. And that's actually the first part of the part three. It's going to be is actually putting people in group and, and giving them like a problem and they'll be solving it like the teacher. I'm like giving you the, the, the punch things already, actually solving the problem as like 
full 100% like this is the ideal answer I would like to get. And then from there, like starting to remove stuff into a four, starting to remove stuff into a three, you're starting to remove stuff into a three. But that again, this is one way of doing it. But again, this is not some, I did the exercise with a group of people and I noticed uh, one of the observation that we noticed lots of math teachers do things differently. Some math teachers, they work from perfect to terrible. Some they say, no, 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 give me a student work around the three and I'll see how we could add. But having a bunch of people around the table, like you said, uh, from different places with different realities and correcting the same exam is very rich because of exactly what you're saying. What's their perception of a full five on five? What is a, for their perception? And having that conversation among, among math teachers on, on what is a five for me? Is it the same as a five for you? The definition of a, of a, of a like you said, the gradation of marks, yeah. That's definitely something I will be doing and I'll be, uh, and and if I, uh, if in case in the future, I will put a math group together to create something like that, I will definitely throw the invitation and see if anyone would be interested. So definitely it's easier to work with a small group than a bigger group. And yeah, thank you so much for that idea. Okay. Well, anyways, the, the thing is with you guys, I could just tell you next time, I might tell you the new DEDs, the changes in the new DEDs. So that might kind of give you a bit of uh, things to, to look into or to look forward to. Um, thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm really happy that we had this session together. I will definitely look forward for next time. And please, if you have any questions, any thought, any suggestion, any insult, go ahead. Please send it my way and I'll be more than happy to see what I can do to help and support you. Have a very good afternoon and evening and uh, thank you again. See you next après-coup.